Welcome to Robina Living Ideas. Robina Quality HDF Laminate Flooring surrounds you with the freshness of the natural world. It exhibits the warmth of home sweet home. A rich and meaningful home begins with Robina Flooring. The entire video clip will show you how to lay the Robina Flooring. Installing Robina Flooring is as simple as holding your hands. Segment 1 Robina Flooring Floating Floor System Robina Flooring is installed as a floating floor system and therefore is not bonded or attached to the subfloor. This floating system allows for expansion due to the seasonal changes of the temperature and humidity. This exquisite and durable flooring is surprisingly easy to install using basic do-it-yourself tools. It's so easy that anyone can do it. Just click in the flooring at the correct angle. No hammering or nails required. Making life easy is a beautiful thing. We all know because we use Robina flooring. Segment 2 Tools and Materials Before you begin, you would like to have everything you need at hand. You need some simple tools. Measuring tape, pull bar, hand saw, hammer, L-square, utility knife, pencil, polyethane tape, laminate flooring touch-up kit or wood filler, spacers, profile molding or skirting, glue, optionally you might also need safety glasses and a dust mask. Robina flooring packet includes a laying instruction manual. We recommend you use the instruction manual in conjunction with this videotape. Segment 3 Estimation To determine how much Robina flooring material you need, begin by taking the measurement of the room which you plan to install in square meters or square feet. Take the number and divide by the total square meters or square feet furnished to the content of the single box of the flooring. Once you have the number, round it up to the nearest whole number. There is very little wastage on the laminate flooring installation, but you will need some extra flooring material as a precaution. Segment 4. Preparation You would need to acclimatize the flooring material 48 hours prior to installation. Place the Robina flooring flat on the ground. Do not let it stand on the edges. Make sure the subfloor structure itself is dry, clean and flat. Compensate any unevenness up to a maximum of 3 mm using a suitable compensation leveling compound. Existing carpet and needle felt must be removed. The floor surface must be properly dried off. Concrete floors must be fully cured and must not show any sign of moisture. We recommend you carry out the moisture test on the concrete by taping a 60 by 60 centimeter piece of polyethane to the subfloor. After 24 hours, if the moisture condensation appears on the film or the concrete appears dark in color, it's likely that excess moisture is present. Consult a professional for more help. When laying Robina laminate flooring over the underfloor heating, adhere to the heating instructions. Segment 5 Layout After the cleanup, you are ready to do the layout. To decide where to begin, consider the incoming light source. It is usually best to install Robina flooring parallel to sunlight, coming in from either the window or the glass door. For any installation, the starting wall should be long and as straight as possible. So follow the longest and straightest wall that's parallel to the sunlight. That's where you begin. Segment 6. Installation. After preparing the subfloor, now you can lay out the PE foil and the underlay for the next 5 to 10 rows of panels that you will install. The PE foil needs to overlap by at least 1 inch and sealed with waterproof adhesive tapes. No overlapping on the edges of the underlay. To avoid the narrow piece at the end of the wall, check by measuring the beginning and the finishing from the wall. Divide the distance with your panel width. If the last row's panel width is less than 50 millimeter, cut the first row panels into half. 
Robina flooring is carefully packed. However, it is recommended that you check the panel prior to installation. Open the package only prior to laying. Begin the installation from the left corner of the room and lay the first panel with the tongue side that must be cut off towards the wall. Ensure at least 12 to 15 mm expansion gap around the perimeter of the room as well as against any fixed object. Use spaces or wedges to safeguard the first row. Position the second panel with its tongue side at an angle against the groove of the first panel already in place. Slightly push in and bring down the second panel to connect these two panels. Repeat these steps to complete the first row. Measure and cut off the last panels of the first row. The cut-off materials from the first row can be used to begin the second row, but it must be more than 12 inches or 300 millimeters in length. Robina flooring can be easily installed by two common methods. You can use whichever is more suitable and easier for every situation. The first method is to install Robina flooring row by row. Apply the same method as the first row to join the panels of the second row. Tilt the panels together and position the tongues onto the grooves of the previous row at an angle. Slightly push in and bring down the panels until they are fully flat. Do not make the first panel of each the same length. From the third row onwards, repeat the same method as the second row. However, after installing row 3, you may position yourself on the flooring which has been installed in order to lay row 4 and onwards. The second method is the piece by piece installation where you place the short end tongue panel 2 into the short end groove panel 1 at an angle of 15 to 20 degrees and then push down the panel. Lift the two panels together, slightly push in the long end panel 2 until it is parallel with panel 1. When this happens, the length tongue will connect with the length groove. Gently push in the panel until both panels are fully flat down. Repeat these steps for panel 3 onwards until the row is completed. For the door frame, kick bases and counter bases need to be undercut to hide the panel's edge. Always allow proper expansion gaps behind the undercut. For the final row, if the wall is not straight, adapt the panel to the course of the wall by using a small piece as a ruler. Place it on top of the full panel. Use a pencil to mark the full panel and cut according to the marking line, with consideration given for sufficient expansion gaps. Cut the board and lock in place using the pull bar, if necessary, to make the joint tight. Last but not least, remove all spaces, install the skirting and profiles. Make sure the laminate flooring is floating freely. Segment 7. Repairing Damaged Panel Repairing a damaged panel is simple and quick, and you can feel the comfort immediately. Firstly, mark one straight line at the middle of the panel. Secondly, mark 45 degrees from the panel corners. Cut at the marking line and pull out the damaged panel accordingly. Seal the underlay with adhesive tape if you have overcut the underneath. Take a new panel, trim the groove side and the long and short end. Apply glue at the four corners of the adjoining plank and the new plank. Lay the new panel into the removed area and make sure the new plank is fully inserted. Wipe off excess glue right away with a clean damp cloth and remember to rinse the cloth in lukewarm water 